Hey there, YouTube. Welcome back to Gators Golden Coins. Got a good one for you. Last time we talked about selling large amounts of gold and silver and some things you might run into with that. This time, let's talk about selling normal amounts, less than $10,000. There's two things I'd like to talk with you guys about. Now, one thing I, I'm constantly hearing in um, the precious metals community is, you know, who's going to buy gold when it hits $5,000 an ounce? And people are saying, you know, that's why I, I refuse to buy an ounce of gold because no one's going to be able to afford it. No one's going to be able to buy $5,000 worth of, of gold in a single transaction. So, you know, uh, it's better to stack the, the fractionals for that for that uh, purpose. Guys, I just got to tell you, I mean, the price of gold is going to continue to go up and you got to think a little bigger. You got to think a little more big picture. Um, there are people out there. I know this is hard for regular working class people like us to believe, but there are people out there who have money and to them buying $5,000 of something is not going to be a big deal. So uh, I'm just trying to tell you. Um, when the time comes and, and gold is hitting, you know, $5,000 an ounce, there's absolutely going to be a market for, for that. Now, the other thing you have to understand is, um, the price that gets set is the market is the fair market value. So that's already been determined by buyers and sellers. So it's not like, um, I think some people are under the impression that there's just a room full of people who are just kind of randomly deciding what the price of gold and silver is going to be for the day you know like let's make it uh, let's push it a little higher see if they're if they're willing to buy or let's uh let's you know give them a discount today that's really not how it works it's uh uh the spot price is calculated based on buyers and sellers all over the world and it's kind of like uh an, an average of all these buyers and sellers it's a very complex market very large market but the spot price is always being pushed up and down by real life transactions. And you have to understand that um, gold and silver is not just for stackers like us. It has industrial applications. There's a lot of you know large businesses that need gold and silver to manufacture their products. So they're always going to be buyers and that's not even uh, including that people are going to use it for jewelry and large uh, central banks are, are constantly um, wanting to buy more gold and silver to uh, provide stability to their governments. So there's always, always, always going to be a market for gold and silver. There has been for thousands of years, and the price is going to continue to go up. Now, even, um, you know, let's focus more on local. So even when you go to your coin shop, you're, a lot of people are saying, well, I just don't believe that the coin shop is going to be able to buy an ounce of gold at $5,000. Guys, I got to tell you, um, I've personally gone to coin shops and sold a full tube of, of Gold Eagle coins and, and walked out with you know, about $25,000 uh, cash. I mean, there's absolutely coin shops out there that can afford to buy your gold. That's how they stay in business. Now, if you happen to go to a, a, a smaller coin shop, I've been to smaller coin shops as well, and they don't keep cash on premise, and that may just be a security thing or just a, it's easier for their accounting and, and, and uh, you know bookkeeping, and, and they'll just write you a check. They have that money in the bank, and, and that money will just be transferred from their account to your account. So there's always, always going to be uh, people who can buy your gold or your silver no matter what price it gets to so just wanted to clear that up real quick now i also want to tell you guys a story and this is a very sad story and it's a very it's a true story it, it actually happened um i'd like to tell you about my friend andy um andy was a friend of mine we were actually um college classmates um Andy wanted to sell his car, okay? Now, this is this is for all you people who want to sell your, your gold and silver on Facebook or Craigslist. Um, I, I just got to, I got to question you on that and if it's really worth it. Now, my friend Andy wanted to sell his car. He, he wasn't even into gold or silver. And he met a guy in a parking lot 
big parking lot and it was like Costco or, or um, Walmart, something like that. In the middle of the city, in the middle of the day, broad daylight, middle of the city, not in on the edge of town or anything like that. Middle of the city, middle, you know, broad daylight, middle of the day. And uh, the guy who was meeting was a convicted felon uh, with a gun. And this guy killed Andy. He shot him dead right there in the parking lot and stole his car and just drove off. And um, now eventually they caught him. Um, but my friend Andy uh, lost his life over that car. Um, that's very unfortunate. I just really question um, the viability of selling gold and silver to strangers that you meet on the internet on a Facebook marketplace or a, a Craigslist ad. I just really got to question um, the sanity of doing something like that. You'll never catch me doing it. I can tell you that much. So I'm always going to use my coin shop. Uh, you may have noticed that when you walk into a coin shop, uh, they're armed. They're, everyone there is usually carrying a gun on their hip. And uh, there's a lot of cameras and a lot of security. And they do that because uh, they're a target. They have a lot of gold and silver on site and a lot of cash. So just wanted to point out those two things, guys. Um, when it comes time to sell, if, if you think you, you know, you're determined to get that premium back and you're going to sell it to someone you know, um, let's say it even goes through and, and everything works out fine. Well, now there's someone out there who knows who you are and knows that you're a coin collector and they know your name and your face. Um, maybe they don't know where you live, but I don't know. Maybe it's a friend or a family member and they do know where you live. Um, I, I'm just the kind of guy I don't want anybody to know. I don't even let my family know. I, I just I just play it safe like that. So um, you never know, guys. I've, I've seen a lot in, in my day and uh, you'd be surprised that even very close friends can sometimes uh, one day they might not they might not be your friend and even close family members um, a lot of times they fall on hard times and they know well uh, you know Gator has a lot of gold and silver I, I'll borrow from Gator <laughs> um, I'm just saying guys you know the coin shops I go to they don't even ask for ID they don't care who you are. So up to you. You make the decision that's best for you. I just wanted to share my own insight, my own personal experiences uh, in case that helps you. But that's all I got for you today, guys. Um, quick one for you. Hope that was helpful. I appreciate you watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.